Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 1. Almost chapter 2. I'm in chapter 2, that's why I said that. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 78. Zacharias is still speaking. I got a problem here. Alright, we're going here. No function. No way that came up. Alright. Luke chapter 1, verse 78. John the Baptist has been born, been circumcised, he's been named, his father has been speaking of joy that his tongue has been loosed, and he's been prophesying and praising God. So, verse 78, though the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring, sun rising from on high, has visit, visited us. Now this day spring, let's go to Job 38, 12. The Lord Jesus Christ. The second advent reference. Job 38, 12. Job chapter 38, verse 12, about this day spring. Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and causing the day spring to know his place? It's the sun rising coming up, the sun of righteousness. Now the morning light that we see, Malachi 4.2. Still on the day spring, but the morning light. Malachi 4.2. What we're looking at is Lord Jesus Christ. Last book of the Bible, chapter 4, the last chapter of the Old Testament, verse 2. Malachi 4, 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, capital S, of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Well, that's, where, that's the place where calves are kept. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Isaiah 60, verse 1. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, a gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. In the millennium, I mean, in the tribulation period, at the seventh year, the sun is darkened. The moon doesn't show her light no more. It is a period of complete without any natural light. Then the Lord Jesus Christ comes like the light at the end of the tunnel. The fire. To devour the enemies. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to that light. And the kings to the brightness of thy rising. So what we're looking at is the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at the second advent. Zacharias is jumping back to Luke chapter 1. He's jumping all the way to the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ hasn't even been born yet. John is only eight days old. At the name you name they named the child a male child is circumcised the eighth day and then the eighth day is when they named the child which we read is going on it says verse John uh, Luke 1 verse 39 it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child 
and they called him Zacharias. So this is the eighth day. G John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus, I believe. Three or six months. Jesus hasn't even been born yet. He's still in Mary's womb, and we are reading about a Levite who has entered the holy place, who has seen Gabriel, the angel that stood before the, that stands before the Lord, and he is talking about an advent that is yet to come. Never mind the first advent. He has, Jesus hasn't even been born, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world yet. And we're jumping over that. We're jumping over the cross. We're jumping over the church age. And he's talking about the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. To give light. We read that. To them that sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death. To guide our feet. Into the way of peace. Way. Not ways. Way of peace. Now. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. John 1, 1. We read. Alright, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Exactly what we just read. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. We are reading about his eighth day of life. The circumcision of the covenant of Abraham. This is John grown up just before Jesus comes into the ministry. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light. John was not the light. But was sent to bear witness of that capital L light. That was the true light which cometh or which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, truly not John, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Here's the light. The first advent of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The second light when he comes is for the nation of Israel, but to those who have rejected him, it is a light of terror. It's the light of a train coming through the tunnel to smack you and kill you. John 3.16 John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. Christ is born. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light. Least his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth 
cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that were that they are wrought in God. Now you think it like this, an unsaved man is like a cockroach. You turn on the light and he runs. He doesn't want the light. He wants to keep on living in his sin. That blast of light hurts him. Because look who I look who I really am. I'm not as good as I thought I was in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. 14.6. John 14.6. John 14, verse 6. The Bible says. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is the light. That light is the way. We saw, remember we said the way. Not ways, way. The truth. The light is the truth. Now you gotta be careful because Corinthians tells us that there is a being called Satan. Who transformeth himself in, as an angel of light. An angel of light. Jesus Christ is not an angel. I've seen this angel. I've seen this light at the end of the tunnel. You better be very careful. Because that is not the light of Jesus Christ. Be very careful. There are another Jesus. There's another gospel. There's another spirit, Paul tells us to the Corinthians, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father. You ain't going to get to God but by Jesus, the light. And that light will tell you who you are. That light will tell you you are a sinner, for all have sinned and come to show the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You need to be lit by God to know that. And you need to be lit by God to know you can't do it yourself. Only Jesus did it. And you need the light to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Plain and simple. No religion. Nothing. Nothing you can do. It's already been done by Jesus Christ. That's the light of the Bible. That is the light of God. That is the light of the gospel. Now John is dealing, going to deal, and we'll deal with it later, but with the nation of Israel before the Messiah came. The Messiah hasn't come, what we're reading now. In John's baptism, 180. Back to Luke 180. But Zacharias has jumped way far, a long distance. In 79, in 78 and 79, hasn't even happened yet today in 2015. There hasn't even been the tribulation period yet. We're still in the church age. Verse 80. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts to the day of the showing unto Israel. Child grew up. Like any other normal child. And we're not told anything about his, his birth. We're not told anything about Jesus' life besides what, 13 years old. We're not told anything about John the Baptist. We do know that he never drank. He did right. And he was above all men that were, that were born of a woman. He waxed strong in the spirit. He got stronger and stronger by God's spirit. It was in the deserts to the day of his showing unto Israel. His entire life? Adulthood? What? What was it? We don't know. We do know that his father being a Levite had to go to the temple certain times of the year at the courses that were set leaves you a big gap 
what John's childhood and adulthood was until one day he's born, eight days old. They're, 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 they're having a, a dispute about what's named the child. The father speaks up, and then boom, he, he, he goes off. And we don't read about him again till he's baptizing. And Jesus is on his way to be baptized and begin his ministry. But, chapter 2, verse 1. But, so we leave off John. He's a boy. He's growing up. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Caesar Augustus, uh, I'm trying to see my vision is a little off, sorry. From 9 September, I'm going to say 923 63 BC to 8, 19, 14, A.D., 77 years. We can date by this man in history. He is the first Roman emperor. It's a factual name and a factual time. There's no myths. There's no lies. There's no stories. It's a real man, a real government, and a real time. And this taxing was made when Cyrenius was governor over Syria. Now, oh, um. 2 1 was not the first time for taxes. It began with Cyrenius. Taxi was first made when Cyrenius was governor. Caesar Augustus just, just carried on the tax. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. All right. It is obedience to the law. Roman government. Pagan government. Against God government. Nothing to do with the Bible government. Taxes. Everyone. And you had to go back to where you were. So in other words, if this taxation were to happen today, I would have to go to New London, Connecticut and meet at the New London City Hall to pay my taxes and register and come back to Florida. I would have to take my wife to Ledger, to the Ledger's town hall, and register her and pay my taxes there. That's what it is. This taxation. How wicked and bad taxation is that Christians have to come up with groups to fight taxation. And we're going to close here in three. We're going to leave you in taxation by a foul government. I want you angry. I want to pay taxes. One of the things to leave us at paying taxes. I won't leave you there. I want you to get mad and angry. Because when we pick up this study, I want you to feel stupid. Taxes are in the Bible. And we're going to leave you off with a name of a person that's going to come up. But we're going to stop there. 
we're going to leave you with Roman taxation. And everybody went up, and everybody had to go to their hometown. Not mailing your check off to certain districts of the country, and, you know, put a stamp on the envelope and you send it off. No, you had to go. Be like, if, if the President of the United States said, okay, here's a tax of every American in this country, and you had to go to Washington, D.C. Well, the government will, no, the government won't pay your way. I guarantee the Romans did not pay people to go travel. So we're going to leave you right there, make you nice and happy. The taxation, what a thing to talk We've gone from the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ prophecy, and we're in Rome with taxation. We're going to leave you right there.